Coping with homelessness is job one for former council speaker Christine Quinn. She said of a nonprofit that's the largest provider of shelter and supportive housing for families in New York City. The point starts right now. Christine Quinn is a leading expert in the field of homelessness. He's the head of WIN, a nonprofit that houses homeless families. She's here to talk about one of the most difficult problems Mayor Adams and a parade of mayors before him have been unable to solve. So, Christine, you know, we're, we're getting into the cold months. We've, we've um, had an influx of migrants. I wonder, what is shelter capacity like now, and is that causing an added problem with dealing with the homeless? Well, shelter capacity right now, as it relates to families with children, and that's who we serve at when bursting at the seams bursting at the seams and you know at the end of the de Blasio administration they had gotten out of welfare hotels we are now having because there are so many folks the migrants and also the result of the eviction moratorium ending the city is having to go back into hotels uh, which isn't what you want because at a hotel it's not like a shelter there isn't a full complement of services there isn't 24-hour security you might remember about five or six years ago a fam a mom and her son were sent to a hotel in Staten Island the batterer found them and killed them now, it's not the hotel's fault, but in our shelters, we have cameras everywhere and 24-hour security, so that's not a good thing. But also, you're talking about the supportive services yep. that are so important to help people get uh, through this period. Yeah, when you um, go to WIN, we actually have a holistic wraparound model, the way to WIN. And yes, it includes case management, which the city pays for, but we also have our own real estate agents, housing coordinators who help you find apartments. We have a job training income building program last year we raised the average hourly sal salary for our moms over four dollars wow. when people leave 52 percent of our adults are working we have a camp that isn't just in the summer but is any day school is out of session and it's a stem based camp so we really believe what the city contract gives us that's the floor the needs of our clients getting them through the trauma they've suffered that's the ceiling. So let me ask you this question. Mayor Adams and you and I were at a press conference yes. just the other day. Um, wants to increase vouchers for people to get permanent housing. Good idea, no. bad idea. Is it possible to achieve? It's a great idea. You know, these vouchers, uh, which pay 70% of the rent of an apartment, and then the uh, formerly homeless individual pays 30, they're really like the holy grail when somebody gets one. It used to be under Mayor de Blasio that they were only $1,500 for a family of four. Street Easy did a survey for us. There were zero neighborhoods that had that rent. We raised it up to over 2,200. Now there's dozens of neighborhoods. And with the changes Mayor Adams is making, we're going to be able to help people find housing more quickly because a goal has to be to reduce the length of stay in shelter. It's 15 months at win. Yeah, but let me ask you something. There's this 90-day rule yeah. that says that families have to be in shelter for 90 days before you can even start looking for an apartment. Do you think Mayor Adams um, should release that, re relax that rule? Mayor Adams has to relax that rule, and I was gratified to hear him say at the press conference he's looking at it. Look, this is a vestige of the Giuliani administration. Uh, if you go back to that time, you remember homeless people were te treated terribly. They were almost criminalized for being homeless. So the idea was... If you have to wait 90 days, you won't go to shelter. Nobody's going to shelter for fun. They're going because they have nowhere to live. So think of it. We have a housing shortage, a housing crisis, and we're going to reduce the amount of time somebody can be looking for an apartment. 15 months, the average stay at win. If we could get that down to 12 months, we would open up beds, get out of hotels, and be able to do more.
So basically what you're saying is this, that when somebody comes into shelter, instead of waiting 90 days right. to start apartment hunting, they could start on day one, so it gives them a three-month head start to even try to find a place that they can go to. Absolutely. And day one, you don't get handed the voucher. There's, as you can imagine, a whole lot of paperwork you have to go through and an approval process. Why don't we start that right away? Right now, and this is not including the um, asylum-seeking families, one-third of all of Wynn's clients are not able or eligible today to apply for housing because of the 90-day rule. So why is it so difficult for the mayor to make a decision about the 90-day rule? Instead of just looking at it, why isn't he just with a stroke of a pen do it because it makes so much sense? Well, I think what's happening is that, uh, you know, uh, the folks in the Office of Management and Budget and the other folks who look over budget numbers are raising concerns that if you do this, more people will come into shelter. As I said, I don't believe that, but facts prove that wrong. So last year or a year and a half ago, we raised the amount of the voucher, right, to t over $2,200. In the months following that, there was no increase of people coming to shelter. So the facts just don't bear that out. And a day in shelter is three or four times the amount of money as a day in permanent housing with a voucher. The budget people have it backwards. This will save money. And I'm very confident that we're going to get the mayor there soon. So let me ask you this question. One of the things about the vouchers is that the mayor says he wants people to be able to go to all kinds of neighborhoods. And I, to me, you know, it seems like there may be discrimination in yeah. some neighborhoods against people with yeah. vouchers. Is that the case? And what do you do about it? You know, there's discrimination, uh, really, unfortunately, across the board in city neighborhoods for, with uh, folks uh, who have vouchers. And sometimes the landlords will say things and, and they try to be trickier. Oh, I don't take big families. I only take people who speak English, things like that. It's the role of the Human Rights Commission to crack down on this type of discrimination because there is a law in the city which says you cannot discriminate against a person based on the mode they use to pay their rent. So a voucher versus cash. You can't discriminate. So what we need and what a lot of housing advocates have been pushing for is the human rights campaign to send people out undercover to experience discrimination. Because once you crack down on a couple of landlords, everybody gets the message. Because right now, I think that many landlords think that they can get away yep. with it and that, that they're okay by being discriminatory. Oh, absolutely. They think they can get away with it, so they do it. And people assume that homeless people are not supported, that there aren't people who have their back. But that's not true. There's countless groups like Wynn who stand shoulder to shoulder with homeless New Yorkers. And Mayor Adams showed us that last week in his press conference, that he's standing with homeless folks. So if I was a landlord doing this, I would stop. Because the Human Rights Commission is coming. But see, while it's an admirable goal, the question is, is it doable to get homeless families into what they call good neighborhoods, where there's good services, good libraries, as one of the yep. people talked about, and good schools for their kids? Look, if you have the money, whether it's in a voucher or cash, to pay the rent, it's doable, right? And we want to make sure we break the cycle of homelessness. One of the key factors for uh, uh, someone becoming a homeless adult is if they were a homeless child. So the better the school they go to, the less likely they're going to end up back in the shelter. And that's what we want. And you know, ultimately, the problem with mayors has been, has been that they tried to manage the homeless crisis, kind of manage it off the cover of the New York Post, if you will. No, we need a mayor who's going to end the homeless crisis, stand up, up, commit to that and do that and I hope that's what we'll see in City Hall soon. But don't, in order to do that, don't you have to build a lot more affordable Absolutely. housing? Well, you have to do everything, right? You have to get the vouchers working uh, the best they can, speed up their process. That gets units. You have to make sure all of the units that can be available in the housing authority are available. You need to build apartments that are affordable to people who are, you know, leaving shelter. These are not people with big incomes. In Mayor de Blasio's first home, uh, first uh, affordable housing plan, there were no units affordable for folks exiting shelter. That's changing now, and we need to keep pushing that. And we need to, you know, often you hear people say they don't want affordable housing built in their neighborhood. They're the same people who say, I don't want shelter. The answer is affordable housing. 
Well, you know what? If you don't want homelessness, you got to take some affordable housing in your neighborhood. But we have to make it really affordable to working New Yorkers. Okay, we're going to leave it right there. We'll be right back with more from Christine Quinn. We're back talking to Christine Quinn. You know, one of the things that I've always wondered about since, you know, I've been doing this a long time and, and so have you, is that mayor after mayor has been unable to solve the homeless crisis. I mean, I remember, you know, you talked about Bill de Blasio having a homeless plan. It was the operative phrase in that sentence was his first homeless right. plan, and there was the second, the third, and I think the fourth, and still no, no solving of the homeless problem. So why is it that mayors have not been able to deal with it? Well, I think most mayors really haven't been honest with New Yorkers in the sense that it's going to be hard to solve the homeless crisis, but we can do it. And what it's going to entail is shelters in neighborhoods, supportive housing in neighborhoods, low income, affordable housing in neighborhoods, and it's going to take maybe a decade, right? And mayors don't like to say, we're sending bad things to your neighborhood that you don't like. They're not bad things, but that's how people see them. Mayors like all elected officials to do things that they can solve neatly in four years or eight years. This is not that kind of a problem, and we need to come up with a plan that we maybe amend a little but stick to and be honest with New Yorkers about just how uh, challenging it's going to be. A decade? I think so. Why? What, I mean, in other words, just is going to take that long to build the housing? I think it's a combination of building the housing, improving the schools and the neighborhoods where most of the shelters are, opening more shelters, getting more funds allocated from the state and the federal government for supportive housing, which is permanent housing with services on site. Well, you know, when we're talking about affordable housing, one of the things I thought was really interesting is when they announced a deal to build that new soccer stadium mm -hmm, at City Field, mm -hmm. they included yes. thousands. Of, uh, ten, hundreds of units of uh, below market housing yep. that would be perfect for people who are homeless. Absolutely. The question is this, should that be a blueprint for future economic development? Like if, if somebody wants to do something, they have to build affordable housing. Like for example, there are three casino licenses mm -hmm. that should be, uh, be going to be awarded in the downstate area. Should the city and the state require the people who get those licenses? I'm not saying build right. affordable housing at the casino, <laughs> but I'm saying build it someplace yeah. as a prerequisite for getting the license. Like, what, what are your thoughts on uh, that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I saw one of the places or one of the proposals is for a casino in Coney Island, and I don't have an opinion on that one way or the other, but if it happens, we just opened a shelter in Coney Island a year and a half ago. On average, there are 250 families from Coney Island in the shelter system. It's a neighborhood with a very high number and amount of homeless people. So if there ends up being a casino there, yes, that should absolutely, absolutely happen, as well as those type of establishments should connect to providers to get homeless people working in supermarkets or casinos or whatever you're building. So basically what you're saying is it's a double-edged thing. In addition to a commitment to build housing someplace if you're going to get the license, right. you should commit to providing jobs or helping people get jobs because as you know, a lot of the people who are homeless just want a job and be able Absolutely. to make it. When um, uh, moms come in to win with their children, about 30 percent are working. When they exit, over 50 percent are working. They want a job and they want a job where they can still have the time to take care of their child. The same thing any mom wants and we in New York City have such vast power. We need to leverage it in, an empl in employment and in housing. So when you talk to the mayor, and I know that you probably talked to the governor as well, is this kind of a thing that you would talk about? Absolutely. Like, in other words, before you give out the casino license, before you uh, allow somebody to develop an apartment building, you have to commit yep. to these other things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are the kind of conversations I would have. And we've already been having ongoing conversations about, you know, the 90-day rule and, and things like that. And I, I want to give the mayor a lot of credit on Mother's Day last May. He came to one of our shelters and ha had breakfast with our moms and gave out flowers and talked about his mom and how she would give uh, them a bag of clothes every day in case they got evicted that day. And it was very powerful, not just for our mother, Others, but particularly for the young boys who were there to meet the mayor and, and that makes a difference. 
So I wonder how you feel about the mayor's decision to build those tent cities for the migrants, which often had uh, facilities that were better that people were experiencing in shelters. Was that some, I know that the mayor had to do it because right. he, he was trying to deal with the migrant problem, but there was, was there resentment in the shelter community about that? No, we've had no resentment in when around the, in the migrant families. We have 274 migrant families, 700 migrant children. Let me tell you a story. One of our traditional, if you will, homeless moms went in her closet and took out the clothes she didn't need. How much clothes could she have in her shelter closet? Got a box and went knocking on the door of her neighbors in shelter, got clothes, and then left a box in the lobby for the migrants. Wow. I mean, how many times have I opened my closet and said, I have nothing to wear when I have an obscene number of black pants? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and here's a woman who doesn't have much, but can see abundance and can see need and can meet it. So that's, that's what we've experienced. So speaking of the migrants, does it make sense for the federal government to have a law that makes them wait five or six months before they can get a job? It's ridiculous. It, that provision and also that they're not able to get food stamps, EBT, are ridiculous and really cruel. These are folks who want to work, who want desperately to work, and, and, and that they're prevented from that, which and also prevented from having a subsidy that can get them food is just cruel. I mean, we at Wayne have been, you know, buying food through for our pantries for folks, but it's just it's just terrible because they came here with nothing, literally the clothes on their backs. But they want to work. They want oh desperately. So why, you know, you hear all of this, blah, 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 blah. People don't want to work. Homeless people are lazy. Migrants are trying to rip off, you know, America, which is all a bunch of baloney. And here you have folks and I can tell you for a fact who are dying to work and it's our own federal government not employers who are preventing them from working it's so, the opposite of the american dream so will it take an act of congress can the state do it can the city do it how do we deal with this you know um <laughs> uh, when I was speaker of the city council, I was always a fan of doing something, and then if it was wrong, I'll let them sue us. Uh, so I would say everybody should should take steps on all levels, and if it if it's wrong and it only can be the feds, I think New York City and New York State doing it only shames the feds and gets it more likely that they'll do something. Let's talk about mental health services. You know, um, when the mayor and the governor were dealing with the problem of the homeless on the subways, they also announced that they would open up. 50 new mental health beds, which to me seemed like a drop in the bucket. Yeah, totally. So what needs to be done? What should the state do? What should the city do? What are the short-term solutions and the long-term solutions? So we need more mental health services for our single homeless people, more uh, out on the street, more in shelter. Now that said, the allocation of psychologists, et cetera, that are in the single shelter, there are none in the family shelter. 80% of the moms at Win are domestic violence survivors, yet we have no mental health services on site. We want to make sure that the city allocates funding so mental health providers can, who's, uh, sorry, homeless service providers who have families can hire psychologists and social workers to deliver on-site mental health care. You're 11% more likely to stay in permanent housing if you have had mental health care. We had a client a couple weeks ago, call, were, their case manager called to get an appointment with a mental health provider. It was three and a half month wait. This could have been a, a domestic violence survivor, someone who was evicted. We need to pass a bill in the council that requires funding for mental health services in shelters. Okay, we're going to have to leave it right there for now, but our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming network, CBS News, New York.